Who mm. is this large lad? This is me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Your history teacher for today. So uh, I just want to clarify a few things before I get into the history. If people get like mad or go, hey, no, we missed this important event and like the context, like read a it, book. But, yeah, go read a book. Go look it up. You know, <laughs> let us begin. You know what? I thought for this for this week's history lesson, I was do something a bit more closer to home. And when I say closer to home, I mean uh, 20th century China. To give a context of the story that I'm going to tell you, it's that like Chinese history has like changed and morphed and 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 become different shapes, sizes, and, and with different family members ruling it. But the concept of China itself has sort of always been consistent, where when groups separated, it was not because they wanted to be independent. It was, no, you're not the true China. I'm the true China. And the way I've written it down is to claim myself as the the claimant of China, there can only be one China in China. So China is not China. And I am the true China in China. Understood. Yeah. So today, where our, where our story takes place is in one of the last, uh, well, it was the last dynasty of China, is the great empire of Qing. Now, Qing was very big. And when I say it was like really big, like it was like really, really Big. Holy shit. Um, that's money? that's a Russia for scale next to it, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, Jesus. <laughs> and our story is about a one very interesting man. And uh our boy today is called Pewee. Pewee. Now he also went by uh other names, but for today I'm gonna just call him Henry. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Noted. So All I'm right. gonna I'm gonna keep it to uh to Henry. And also I don't wanna butcher. Uh, Chinese names, uh, it'd be kind of weird. He happened to inherit the entire Qing Empire in 1908. <laughs> I feel like this is going to be a reoccurring theme in my my storytelling, but there's there was a bit of an issue. Oh God, I see where this is going. <laughs> he was two years old. <laughs> Damn it. Oh. Mm. oh. I gotcha. Mm. And yeah, he had to rule essentially an empire that was falling apart like inch by inch uh, from just civil unrest. And the sad reality of it is that he became emperor because nobody else wanted it. Wait, where is it? Where are the parents in this? In All right. This deal? One night uh, he's, he's, you know, sleeping with his, with his family and uh, a bunch of royal guards come to his house and say, okay, you're the emperor now. And he's a baby. So he's just kind of like crying and his parents are like, well, it is his duty. <laughs> so they kind of just uh yeah let him let him go what does a two-year-old do when you know ruling one of the largest chinese empires in history we're gonna skip to 1912 the empire went from looking like this to looking like this and then looking like this guys is mongolia getting bigger <laughs> <laughs> And this became like a civil war and there was civil unrest and stuff. One day, what was funny is like one day he, he climbed on top of the, the buildings in the Forbidden Palace. Notice he looked outside and realized like people were waving banners of his country, but they weren't his country. And he went to like his unit. He's like, wait, I thought I was like the emperor. And then you, they were like, yeah, but like inside this like palace, like technically, yeah, but not out there well you're gonna recognize this flag in a second hey ooh. the nationalist, nationalist party, party of china. china but they were kind of like cool because well not cool they were they were, they were not very cool <laughs> were they cool for the time they, they were they were cool for the time in the sense that they let henry like live <laughs> the bar is low out here guys the bar did, is low did not murder a six-year-old <laughs> <laughs> because in 1917, even though at this point he's been essentially put like that, like, you can stay in the the Forbidden City, you can like pretend to be emperor, uh, but you can still keep the palace. But funny enough, in 1917 he was reinstated as emperor. They brought him back, and he lasted 11 days. And this is the sad reality of Henry's life, because Henry was a little shit. He was a little shit. Yeah, he was nine years old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, but he did like torture his eunuchs and servants, and and oh, okay, what? that's a little that's uh, a little farther than what I thought. <laughs> yeah, I don't but, think I was torturing anyone at nine. Once he started learning about outside politics, he became so self aware. And one of his quotes is, uh, "If a time when China was called a republic and humanity had advanced to the 20th century, I was still living as an emperor, breathing the dust of the 19th century." 
Hello, it is Krusty from the future. If you're wondering why I sound like a full-out ghoul, it is not because the nuclear war has occurred, but because I have catched COVID. Something you may not have catched is that we now have 50 channel members, which I would just like to say thank you so much. Just a reminder for those who aren't aware, for $1 you can get access to all uncut versions of the Swag Academy videos. We also need all our current channel members to go through and watch our uncut videos and mark timestamps on what you consider the funniest moments in the series so far, which will then be used to make a best of compilation. Okay, Skipty, give me back my meds. Uh, during this time, he still practices like his royal duties and stuff. And Henry got a educator from Scotland. He, he essentially was there to teach Henry like how to be Western because uh, Henry was absolutely obsessed with like the western world oh my God. <laughs> what a fucking a weeb. weeb yeah he's a weeb for the west well, it's funny it's funny you say that so you have what we call a weeb and then you have a tiabu <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> and our boy henry was very much a tiabu i see it now i see it i see it. the the government finally kicked him out of the palace and they moved him to Tianjin. And this was the Roaring Twenties by this point. So everybody was partying and there was loads yeah. of money and all the fun times, you know? And my boy Henry loved this shit. <laughs> he was like, hell yeah, I'm gonna like, he would throw parties. He was kind of like a playboy. He wanted to be kind of like, I guess you could imagine the Chinese uh, Great Gatsby in a sense. Well, here's the problem. Uh, knock, knock, uh, Imperial Japan is <laughs> at the door. Essentially, the Japanese approach him and they're like, look, boy, uh, we've just taken Manchuria and the entire planet has essentially said that it was an illegal invasion. If we make you like the quote unquote emperor of Manchuria, wink, wink, we will have <laughs> wink, wink. Yeah, we will have. Yeah, we will have a legitimacy of uh, of the territory. So it, he didn't really have too much of a choice when the Japanese gave him that offer. Because it was either that or he was considered another uh, Chinese person. Um, and essentially, this is where my next part gets real dark, by the way. Um, the Japanese did not treat um, the, the, the Chinese very well. The, the way like a lot of historians would like to look at Henry, you know, the emperor was kind of like seen as a puppet. And that's essentially what Henry was. That's the... Like the sad story with Henry is that in his life, I feel like he always, always felt trapped. Like he was forced to be an emperor and then he was forced to move from what he, he had been taught to learn and know. So after World War II, my boy runs away to Russia, which wasn't a great idea. <laughs> and round about this time, it was a few years after, the communists in China just had won essentially their big civil war. And guess who our boy in charge was? Hey. It's Chairman uh... Mao. But you'll be surprised because Mao actually like made a based move. Unlike the Russians who would shoot their royal family members, Mao was kind of like, all right, all right, hear me out. We'll send you to a prison. And uh... when you're brought back to society, you will be a normal person. <laughs> and no longer a royal family member. Be a, a functional so, member of the Chinese Communist Party. Whatever uh, happened to Henry, the majority of his time after his release, he was a street cleaner. His peers like really said like how much he's changed. For, like people visited him from who used to work for him uh, when he was an emperor, and like they didn't recognize how he was. Someone just said, "I sweep the streets I used to own." <laughs> <laughs> I hate it. I hate that so much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, four-headed mongrel, for that. That's great. But actually, fun fact: um, a few years later, uh, he went and visited the uh, the Forbidden Palace. Funny enough, he had to pay to get in because it was a tourist uh, <laughs> attraction. Like no one knew who he was. Like the idea was that oh, people would just forget about him. And um, he actually got in a fight with um, not a physical fight, but like a well, uh, a verbal altercation with one of the tour guides because they pointed at a painting and they said, oh yeah, this uh, this painting is of this uh, Chinese leader. And he went, yeah, no, it's it's not the guy you're thinking it is. And they're like, oh, so like you're the expert. And, <laughs> well, actually, <laughs> uh, this was the last known photo I could find of him. But yeah, he died of kidney cancer. So historians are very like, 
unsure how he got the kidney cancer. But the most common theory that I have seen in research was that he fucked so many bitches. <laughs> Actual <laughs> quote. Experts believe that his kidney cancer was conserved because he had uh, many sexual relationships during his early years as emperor. Uh, and that, with him, ended the 2,000 years of Chinese imperialism. But you could technically say that given the dynastic system and like throughout the entire Chinese history, you could say that it was the end of four to 6,000 years of Chinese like feudalism in a sense. That's the end of my presentation. Ooh, thank you very much. Thank you, Krusty. Always a pleasure thank you. to hear the, thank you, thank you. the arm hair, arm, arm hair historian. The arm, arm hair. What <laughs> <laughs> if it's me looking down on me? The world above must also be This could go on for infinity